and welcome back to the Off the Irish podcast. Today we have a, ourselves a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Kristen Brooks Sandler, and I am a choreographer, dancer, director, creator based out of New York City. Wow. And great to have you on the podcast. Uh, thanks for coming on. Happy to be here. Yeah. So, can you tell us what, what got you into dancing? Oh, I've been dancing um, kind of since I can remember, probably since I was about two years old. Um, and it's uh, always been a part of my life. And, you know, when you're young, you try a bunch of different things, right? Your parents often stick you in like, you know, dance and basketball and karate and, and gymnastics and kind of anything to, to get your energy out um, and get yeah. you out of the house. <laughs> um, but for me, as I, as I kind of started growing up, um, you know, things start to conflict. So it becomes either you can keep doing softball or you can keep dancing and, and it chose dance and kind of throughout my life, it kind of ended up more the hat. The only thing left was dancing, and I was uh, very intense into it, and um, I absolutely love it. Just love moving around and creating stories with the uh, with the body. Hmm. Well, that's a really way to. That's a really good way to put. It. I've never heard someone actually say it like that. Which I have to ask then. Do you? Would you no, consider sure yourself? Oh, sorry about that. Oh God. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, it's good now. Yeah. Yeah. Would you consider yourself an artist then? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I've done, um, on the performing side of things, I've uh, performed a lot in dance shows and music theater. I did two national tours. I uh, danced on a cruise ship for a while. Um, so I definitely, um, I think that acting in dancing is actually really important. Um, when... I was in college, I kind of got known as like the dancer who could act because um, I'm a big fan of storytelling and I think movement is kind of a universal language. It doesn't matter what language you speak, there are kind of certain uh, certain movements and cer certain postures that we all can kind of relate to, right? If you're seeing someone walking down the street and their shoulders are hunched and their heads down, like you can tell that they're probably having a bad day um, as opposed to someone who is walking, standing upright. Um, maybe they're having a slightly better day or even a smile, you know, smiles are, are a form of movement. Um, so yeah, I would totally consider myself an actress also because I've done a bunch of music theater, but in the dancing world, yeah, I, uh, I love bringing that kind of story into, into what I do. Hmm. Yeah. Let me get that. Um, now you're a choreographer, so you come up with a lot of dances for musicals and stuff like that. Do you have any inspirations where you get your dance moves from, or are they kind of off the duff kind of stuff? Um, great. Oh. <laughs> um, great question. I hope. Oh. Sorry, you keep cutting off. It's okay. <laughs> your mic keeps going off. Does my one? Yeah. Oh well, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just just there. All right. Sorry um, about that. Can you ask me that question again? I lost it for a second. I said you're a dance choreographer and you do yes. a lot of come up with a lot of dances for different musicals or pieces. And I said, do you have any inspirations for your dance pieces? Right. Yes. Um, well, when it comes to music theater, um, I like to pull inspiration from what the show is about and like what the environment is um so you know there are certain shows that are just set in theater or like a chorus line for example um but other shows have have traditional dances that they and and time periods that they kind of hearken to um and i love kind of doing a lot of deep diving and researching into what was the movement of the time period, what kind of social dances were people doing, um, what uh, problems or implications might they have, um, were they driving cars, were they not, were they walking everywhere, um, because all of this kind of informs how people move in, in the world that we're creating. Um, so I love doing that. Um, I... People often ask me, like, if I watch, 
like older like other productions of the the musicals um because often you'll you can find like bootlegs online of the original broadway or um what have you other productions um and i like to uh wait until i'm stuck like if i'm creating something and and i find that I'll, i don't quite know how to do this part or or i'm looking for a little bit more inspiration sometimes i'll look up other versions of it or productions and I'll look for the things that mostly I'll look for the things that don't really work for me that I think like oh how could I improve on that or um that's not the version of the story I'm wanting to tell how do I take that idea and kind of make it my own um and then the movement vocabulary some of it comes from history and then some of it just comes from my body um i'm a uh, my movement has often been, been described as ooky spooky um okay. kind of <laughs> ooky spooky kind of kind of broken and kind of uh, a little bit like grace grace from the grotesque is what we say a lot and um so sometimes it just comes out of my body as well <laughs> 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 so this, this is a bit of a weird question now, but what would you say is like your favorite decade in terms of dancing? Ooh, what a good question. Um, let's see here. I, I mean, I love, I'm a 90s kid, so I do mm. love the 90s, um, especially with that kind of like breaking hip hop kind of era of things, um, pop and lock, that sort of situation um ah uh, yes and... the 90s a great time yes. when me and dara were not born <laughs> <laughs> lovely oh my goodness if only we could go back yeah, <laughs> we still we still kind of incorporated some of the 90s no no we wouldn't <laughs> i don't know about you but i definitely did you feel like you feel in that 90s vibe is that uh <laughs> it's, like, it's like when you say a 2000s kid people usually think oh oh you're like 2005 yeah, fuck that. If you, were born, <laughs> if you were born in like the late 90s, you're pretty much the same as someone who was born in the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, we, we so definitely becoming conscious around the same time when, when we're uh, looking for references and things. So mm. I'm, I'm a big fan of the 90s and then like adversely, I'm a big fan of like the early 1800s had some weird the movement in it and some weird social dancing um and kind of just like people were doing the the oddest things when it comes to uh uh the dance of that time period so uh it it's kind of fun to to play with that area of historical dance um and totally just, uh, you know, make these rules and then totally mess with them. There's also, like, a lot of, as you can see, like, art and stuff that goes along with that. Um, mm -hmm. So you can kind of imagine how they get in and out of that particular movement. And I find that super inspirational. Wow. That was a really good answer, yeah. Um, <laughs> now that we've got Decade out of the way, what's your favorite style of dancing? Oh, um, I... Oh, I like so many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like so much. Um, I think that uh, I think that what we've come to call contemporary in current dancing is really interesting because it's kind of become its own style, but it's a fusion of a bunch of different styles. It's a fusion of like the original roots of jazz mixed with um you know kind of conglomerate in a conglomerate with like this uh commercialized so you think you can dance world um with also with like modern roots so it, it kind of it's it's kind of weird in that it has no definition and it can definitely be kind of altered and skewed to fit different purposes which i love um so yeah probably that would, um, you, would you describe that as the mma of the dance world 
<laughs> um, you know, I actually think that's a really good way to put it. I've never heard anyone put it that way. I think that I mean, because you're, you're saying that it's like it can't be really described in one kind of thing, and you're bringing all these different aspects in. So, like, I'm I'm thinking like, you know, in MMA you have all these different styles of like fighting, but like mm-hmm. contemporary dance, it sounds like you have kind of different styles merging together. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's a great way to put it. It's it's the MMA of dance. <laughs> um, all right, we have a title, Grit. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. No, I'm messing. <laughs> oh, I'm messing. No, I'm not a fan of jazz. I, I, I hate jazz. And I had to do... Uh, uh, I had to do a couple of jazz classes because I was doing a, I was do, well. We were doing Aladdin for mm-hmm. a play for a, a panto, and I was playing the, the 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 dad of Jasmine or something. But it wasn't it wasn't the actual Aladdin. It's the the musical theater version of it mm. with the with wishy washy and oh, I forget all the characters' names. But anyway, I was I was the emperor or something, and I had to do like a jazz piece so to uh, what was it uh, to uh, I'm a uh, was it Mani? Do you know that one? <laughs> I do a, ja- I do a jazz beat to that. <laughs> and how how did it go? Oh well, my mic. I had to t- like rip off my clothes, and that didn't have work. So my mic was like hanging off me for oh, the entire yeah. thing. I've 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 had worse parts. I've 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 had worse experiences, but like. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, uh, you know, hairspray. Yes, know. very I much. Played John Travolta's character in hairspray. Oh my goodness! How was that for you? It's also amazing because fun. we have photos to blackmail him with. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good as you'd expect. Um, let's see. We did a two-night production of it where I was, um, ah, oh, not Tina. Oh my God! Not it's not Tracy. What's the, what's the mom's name? Uh, no, Tracy's the daughter. I don't yeah. know what that's name oh, is. I can't think. Oh, well, oh Jesus. Look it up. Look up hairspray. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. I don't remember her name. It's Neither do Tracy I. Turnblad, and her mom's name is... Is it... Like Barbara? Edna. Edna, 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 right? Yeah, Edna Turnblad, yeah. Anyway, so I was playing Edna, and the first night that happened, um, I forgot my costume for my... I had a quick change. Oh, no. uh, I, left, I left it in my dressing room and so I went off stage for a couple of minutes and I was like shall I get well no <laughs> everyone was freaking out because like Thomas you forgot your clothes you're gonna be you know and <laughs> the, pro- <laughs> the producer is at the bottom of the stage and so I came out of the stage in my same clothes and she stared at me and uh, I got scared but uh <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to at the very end of it at the very end of hairspray where they're all fighting and stuff and the whole like after the whole riots and they go to jail and they, oh yeah actually for the night we were recording um someone dropped one of the jail cells into the audience because <laughs> they're like ones you had to hold up and one just fell oh <laughs> no <laughs> so that was fun and then I had to everyone was dancing at the very end of it and I had I had to hide in this massive ha- hairspray can in the middle of the stage Mm, but yes. that was closed, and so I came out of that. I was in that for around 15 minutes each night. <laughs> and so I'd come out of that, and I'd have my big moment, and I got to sing, so I was happy. <laughs> it's always, aren't the best, like, the best parts of theatre and dance, aren't, isn't it always the things that go wrong? Like, aren't those always the best stories? They're definitely the ones you'd remember, you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> A lot of stories like that now to be honest they're, they're quite funny like but uh let me just say thomas how dare you say you hate jazz have you ever done jazz hands no it's delightful like, completely different though isn't that that's just like it's an aspect you no know, it's an aspect it's not even an aspect it's a move yeah it is a move <laughs> which is an aspect <laughs> what, what kind of jazz dance did you have to do what kind of jazz dance did i have to do um i, I don't even know years ago now but uh, i had to uh, Oh, I can't even remember. I remember I had the whole, I had this big king costume on. That came off and I had like a leotard on underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And so then you have to do the jazz moves. I don't know. I had to spin around and throw my hands up in the air and mm. pretend to do, and then try to pretend to do a split that didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, before you completely write off jazz dance, um, the uh, that is a very like music theater version of jazz dance. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, the, no, I the cheesiest <laughs> version of jazz dance that could could ever exist. Um, but some of the uh, like the original roots of jazz um, are really really cool. It kind of gave birth to. Uh, tap and and modern and kind of all of these things that we uh you know now know to be you know all of these different things that come into jazz but uh there are kind of fathers of fathers of jazz dance that uh I don't know like have such different styles that have now all kind of like can Conglomerated into the 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 general jazz life um, and the general thing we see a lot of the time, but it it started out as a really like expressive, specific um, art form. Came straight out of Africa, super not 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 from our country um, or mine, I guess. You guys are uh, <laughs> uh, not not here. Um, <laughs> oh, no, we get, we get you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it's the, the beginnings of it are like super, uh, uh, super rhythmic and super tied to like personal identity. There's actually a, a, a movie on it that just came out called, uh, I believe it's called Uprooted. Um, I think, and it's this dance video movie and kind of all of uh like hearkening back to the beginnings of of jazz it's super cool that's just a side note I like um, La La Land. that was pretty cool yeah <laughs> I've, seen, I've, I've seen that La La Land. Land. what do you mean i haven't seen La La Land. Yeah. i haven't seen La La Land. oh La La Land is so good it kind of makes you cry at the end a little bit heard so many things about it it's like the greatest showman like i did watch that and that was all right i will admit mm. but like just heard so many things and I was just like, uh, now that everyone's told me to go watch it, I kind of don't want to. Mm. You know? <laughs> that one yeah. is really good. No, I, um... I wouldn't put it off the table. What? I wouldn't put it off the table. Ah, you should watch it. Um, yeah. would you say jazz music? Do what, If you think of stereotypical jazz music, you think of, you know, this guy on the saxophone, you have the guy in the, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Would you, it's not, but when you think of jazz dancing, I don't see any, like, I don't know what it is with that. Because I think of jazz dancing, I think of, he, she, she's a maniac. I think, <laughs> not, I think of, like, the, the, the Great Gatsby or, like, the, the Roaring Twenties. I don't know why. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a version of it. And it's, uh, you know, it's, that's, it's very closely tied to jazz music. You know, that's where it all kind of came out from this kind of like call and response thing that we hear in jazz music a lot of the times, right? Like there's one instrument that does like a riff, boom, boom, and then the drummer will respond or somebody else will respond with a different instrument and then they keep going. Um, and, you know, some of the, the dance call and responses and the dance polyrhythms and things uh, have their, have their kind of roots in that, in that world. So, uh, what we're seeing like now is jazz dance and music theater jazz dance and all of that um even something like you know you were joking about like jazz hands and uh jazz squares and things right <laughs> they come from those kind of movements actually come from like minstrel shows um back in back in the day and and uh, there's there's some really cool history there that uh, now everything's codified and and we've all learned it and we all know it. Um, but uh, a lot of where dance is now comes from these really like fascinating historical roots in a specific culture or a specific identity that have been kind of both uh, riffed upon and in some ways appropriated and in some ways... Um, you know, uh, changed and, and have evolved into what we view as dance today. Just a little dance history, you know, nugget for you there. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was, like, it's really interesting to see where, like, from the ground up how it came about, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fascinating thing. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask, um, 
I know, like, obviously, like, when you're a dancer, you have to have, like, good rhythm. Because, mm-hmm. like, you have to time it right and everything. And uh, I noticed that in, like, playing musical instruments as well, you have to have good rhythm. Do you play any instruments at all? Um, I mean, I play piano very, very poorly. Um, <laughs> like, very poorly. Uh, like, enough to plunk out what notes I'm supposed to be singing, and that's kind of it. Um, so not really, um, but I am a really big fan of, of rhythm. Um, I use it a lot in my work. Um, everybody uh, makes, uh, the, the dancers that I've worked with a lot make jokes about, uh, oh, here comes the polyrhythm section, which is when I make uh, dancers like, uh, make multiple sounds, multiple rhythms on different parts of their bodies in sections and so they overlap in a really interesting way but it's hard and so everyone rolls their eyes at me (laughs) and goes oh here we go again um so not so much uh actual instruments more like body percussion stuff um though I won't even call myself a a true body percussionist because I know some people that are just so good at that and so incredible (laughs) Um, I'm nowhere near that level, but I love integrating it into the dance that I create. Um, It just always feels like very authentic and very visceral um, because we just make noise with our bodies. Like that's kind of what we do when we move around the world. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you find that um, like if say you're just like walking down the road, listening to music, would you be like listening to the rhythm and be like, oh, I could use that? Oh, yeah, (laughs) all the time. Um, Music's so fascinating because when we listen to a song for the first time, uh, everybody listens to something different. So, you know, some people hear the melody line first, some people hear the words first, some people hear the drum kick or the saxophone or the strings um, or the piano. Um, Something I've noticed in, like, my work and my life is that you can have 10 people listen to the same song and they'll all hear something different upon first listen and you can that means that you can make a movement to any one of those lines at any time during the song um so that's always really fun to play with if uh you know sometimes dancing gets stuck in whatever the the main beat is and I really love to go like oh I've been listening to this line of the music what happens if I switch my ear and pay more attention to the strings or pay more attention to the the I don't know the maracas um what how does that change the way that we move our bodies yeah wow this is so interesting like what the heck <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking all these questions and then you're answering them in like such meticulous really good ways and I'm just like shit I don't know what's going <laughs> next <laughs> well thank you but also you know it's just uh this is, you know, this is my life. Like, I'm sure that there are things that you guys know. Like, what are you guys passionate about? What's your What's your jam besides awesome podcasts? Oh, nothing else. Thank you very much about that. <laughs> uh, some of us aren't allowed to even leave the room. <laughs> you see, oh, yeah, the bo- there's, a, there's, a, there's a running joke about how uh, our, our host that is missing today is actually a dictator. Mm. Uh, you guys call it a joke, some call it reality. It's like whatever. Scare the poor woman. Uh, but now, uh, yeah, like, Thomas, I know you, obviously, you, you like PlayStation. Like and PlayStation. Uh, I know you play keyboard a little bit. I play keyboard uh, a little bit. Myself, I, I play guitar. Nice. Uh, yeah. Also, also video games as well. <laughs> what, kind, what video games do you guys play? Uh, Whatever's on. Uh, yeah, pretty. Yeah, like what? I, like I'll be so lazy that I'll just like turn on the PlayStation. Whatever's in the disc tray, I'll just be like, okay, I'll play it. <laughs> I'm just but, like, all right. All right. <laughs> but video games are turning into such a big worldwide thing now, where they have so many different genres. Where, just say for example, what came? What's the big one? Last of Us Part Two oh, came out recently, part, right? Yeah. So that's that's a game you can only really play once. To be mm. honest, because the story. Well, no, you replay it. It's a story based game. A story based game, you know, the single player kind of thing. You wouldn't, you know, would you play it again though, Dara, to be honest? No, just because it made me <laughs> fucking angry. 
but no, like, uh, there's there's a lot of uh, gaming in in my apartment where I live. I actually getting on this call, I had to tell my partner like, if you could not scream profanities at the television <laughs> while I'm recording, that would be great. Thank you so much. What does your partner uh, say? Um, he plays uh. A lot of Star Wars Battlefront right yeah, now. A lot of stuff. Overwatch. Um, yeah. I try to be a supportive partner and cheering him on and, and learning the, oh, you, you upgraded your cards today and I'm very excited for you. And <laughs> you, you got in the new skin for Sombra that you wanted and I'm so happy for you. You know, I don't, I, I play a lot of like, uh, Switch games because those I understand, mm. um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I try to you know I try to be a supportive partner with the gaming and go like oh this one's the one where you this one's the the Assassin's Creed one where you're you're in in Greece and and you're trying to find your mother brother something like that, yeah. um, but the storylines are always fascinating to me as an artist I think it's kind of incredible what a world people can build in video games. It's like so, yeah. so interesting. I feel like it's getting bigger now as well. Like even the soundtracks of some games are just absolutely incredible. I know when The Last of Us, the first one came out, uh, the soundtrack was everywhere. Like it's all classical guitar and 12th string and stuff like that. Yeah. So many people are in love with it. Like it's, it's incredible. It's and beautiful. It, it was a big part of the second game as well because like... Uh, there's like guitars around the place, kind of hidden, mm. and uh, there's mini games you can kind of play where if you hit the right chords, then it'll play an entire song. Oh, and cool! The main character will sing it as well. <gasps> That's so <Yeah>. fun. <laughs> I know it's like it's it's cool, but like yeah, as I said with that game, yeah, probably not going to replay it unless they release a number three, in mm. which case I'll have to replay it or just rewatch it. Mm. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you though, the dancer, not yes. the gamer <laughs> of the household. <laughs> <Good one, guys. laughs> You're obviously very into your musicals, but I must ask, what is your favorite musical that you've either seen, you've starred in, or even like you know choreographed? Oh, um, I wow, my favorite one. Um, you can do one for each, you know, scene, okay. starred in, kind of like choreographed behind, behind the scenes, you know. Go on. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one of my favorite, one of my favorite shows I've ever, uh, choreographed, I choreographed, um, oh goodness, I like them all. I really enjoyed choreographing, uh, Oklahoma, which is a pretty classic <clears throat> musical, um, but the way the freedom that I was able to that I was given by the director and by the producing house um, was really cool because we were able to kind of build this world that was very kind of atypical and very grounded and very rhythm based um, because my thought with the people that live in this in this world is that they're, you know, they live on the farm. They're farmers and cowmen. There's literally a song called The Farmers and the Cowmen Can Be Friends. <laughs> um, and so when you live in that sort of society, you know, we were talking about like research and, and you know, where do you draw movement from? It's like the social dances of that time um on the on the plains there's a there's literally like a a social dance in the in the show and so we had a really good time building characters and building uh one of the characters goes to kansas city which is like a big you know oh it's a big deal he came back from kansas city and he comes back and he shows everyone a dance um and then we decided to do something where uh that dance showed back up at the the social the box social later in the show because you know our thought for the character was like oh he went around town and he showed everyone the dance and now everybody knows the dance and they're all going to do it together um so that was kind of a lot of fun and there's uh, in oklahoma there's a dream ballet um so uh, there's this part where Lori, the main character, she sips um, this elixir, a very questionable elixir, or, you know, in the show. He, she, she buys it from some guy and she drinks it and you're like, what are you 
drinking exactly that makes you hallucinate in a ballet for nine and a half minutes. Um, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun because you can really you can really do anything with it. It's just a score, and you know where you begin and you know where you end, and you can kind of plot out whatever you want in the middle. And I, as I said before, I love telling story with movement, and there's no speaking during this time. There's no lyrics. It's just all music, um, and that was a lot of fun to build um and we got to um we made the ending something that uh we changed the way that the ending usually goes um so i don't want to i don't want to do a spoiler for anybody do we care if we talk about the the spoilers of the show you guys ever gonna see (laughs) i know dara is a massive musical theater Uh, fan so you know i love musical theater I haven't seen no. I I I've been to a couple of pantomimes and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah. No, we we, we, we you can spoil yeah. it for us because we're, right, you can go ahead. <laughs> well, usually at the end of the show, basically there's this moment where uh, one of the main characters gets killed by the other <gasps> main character, um, and it's kind of up for interpretation. They they say he fell on his knife. Uh, which is kind of silly. Um, and so it's a little bit up for interpretation about like how exactly that altercation went down. Um, and the sheriff wasn't there for it. So he walks in and the whole town kind of covers for what is usually the lead male character um, kills the other lead, mer- uh, lead male character. Um, and in our production, basically we had the female pick up the knife and by mistake walk into this other person and kill him by mistake. And he's in love with her and it's like very dramatic. And it was a lot of fun to kind of throw that on its head and have people really be shocked by it in the audience every night because a lot of people know the musical Oklahoma. So they know what it's supposed to be. And for those of, those people who don't know it, there's no other death in the show. So it's not like you're like, oh, people are getting killed all the time in this show. This is normal. Like, it's not Game of Thrones. It's Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it was really cool as a um, mm. as a creative to kind of sit in the audience and like hear, hear a group of people react to this physical movement because there's no words describing it. Again, it's all music. Um, so that, and and kind of see people get what we were going for. And it changes the whole, like, last 10 minutes of the show because, you know, there's this couple that has by mistake killed this man and they're kind of trying to share the burden of it as they, like, embark on their newly wed life together, um, which is super weird and dark. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> super dark. Um, but I'm just thinking, was, we, we, me and Dara, we watched... Um... I was just thinking about this because they did change the ending. We watched the original Nightmare on Elm Street yesterday, original? and then we watched the the we remake. Watched the original, and then we watched the remake. And I was I was telling Thomas, I was just like, Thomas, the original is so good. The remake, fucking garbage. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and then just remember that they 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 the didn't original. kill off the guy. You know what's his name? Yeah. Freddy Krueger. No, 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 no. Oh, it, oh, oh, Johnny Depp's character. Yeah, they didn't kill yeah. off Johnny Depp's character in the remake. That's Which was the that was the first discrepancy, and then at the end of it, the comments are like, "Sorry, no." Uh, but in yeah, in the original, it's kind of like the ending is kind of silly. Mm-hmm. And it, the the movie doesn't really take itself seriously that much at all in the original one, because the last thing that happens is like the con- like the roof of a car. It's a convertible, like closes on it, and it's like Freddy Krueger's jumper kind of pattern, mm. and then. Uh, it drives off, and then the mother gets pulled through uh, the glass in the door. But uh, you can clearly see where it cuts from being the mother to being like a blow up doll. <laughs> <laughs> and but in the in the la- like in the remake, it's like she uh, she she bends over and then she like uh, stands up, and uh, Freddy Krueger's in the mirror behind her ma, and then puts uh, puts his finger glove like his his knife love through her face and uh, pull, pulls her into the mirror and then just disappears it's so dumb then, yeah what? it is it's so dumb uh, they didn't need it i don't know uh, it's like there's very they, they very very make, few they tried to make it as makes. scary as possible but like it just didn't work yeah i think that there's i think satire can sometimes be 
more disturbing than the disturbing things. Like we, we currently live in an art culture where we like are kind of used to seeing people's heads get chopped off and like lots of bloody battles and, and, you know, all sorts of kind of horror, the, what people could, can do with, with horror films and things nowadays is much more advanced than what it used to be. But we've kind of a lot of, in a lot of ways, we've kind of lost some of the art of like, the structure of a movie like that and I think that it, it it kind of like this falls in here's my director brain coming out but I love when when movies kind of like lull you into a false sense of like security or like uncomfortable <laughs> like humor um and things like that because it can be just so much more jarring when when stuff gets dark because that's life <laughs> Exactly, yeah. yeah. I will I will admit, though, like, Nightmare on Elm Street, the original one's good. Remake, garbage. And then I made Thomas watch two of, like, the best horror films that have come out in the last ten years. Mm. Uh, is Hereditary and Midsummer. Mm. And both of those, like, the especially uh, Hereditary. Like, the I remember the trailer came out and it featured the little girl in it so prominently. Mm. I think the whole movie is centred around her. And, uh, I wait, have oh. you seen it? Me? Yeah. I have not seen it. Oh, that you shut up. It? No, you have to see it. It's not like <laughs> Oklahoma. This is an optionary for you to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Noted, noted. It goes from zero to 100 in like the first 30 minutes. And uh, it just, it keeps getting, like you think it got bad and then it just keeps getting worse and worse like. Same thing with Midsummer, just not to the same extent. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Well noted. I'll put it on my list of things to watch. And it'll should, pop yeah. to the top of the top of the list. Top of the queue now. Awesome. So. You you got you you gotta you gotta text us when you do that because we got it we, we wanna see like yeah, you, know. you have to know your reaction. I, I watched it before Thomas. Uh, I watched mm-hmm. it there maybe two weeks ago with my friend and uh, so I said to Thomas last night, I was like, I watched this movie it was life changing. I love horror movies and I love like kind of gory horror films and horror films that are like shocking and stuff like that. Mm. And, uh, I was just like, Thomas, you know my love of horror movies, but this movie fucked me up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, okay, I guess I'll watch it. And I'm just watching this. Or I'm not going to say what moment it is, but there's like a really shocking moment. And his jaw just dropped and it was like that for like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was just like, bet you didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> oh my god, I'll have to like tape my reaction to it and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow, that was that was a tangent. Horror. Awesome. Right, let's go back to musicals though. Best Great. one you've seen. Best one I've seen. Um, oh my goodness. <sighs> Best one I've seen. So I think that there's a, I'm going to make a distinction right now because the best, the, I feel like there's a difference between the best musical I've ever seen in terms of the content of the musical versus the the production of the musical, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So like, Content wise and writing wise, all encompassing wise, I think honestly, even though it has nearly no dancing in it, so isn't that hysterical? But um, Come From Away was very impactful and cool um, for me. It it follows basically the the people who got stranded during 9-11 um, in Canada. Um, and it's the story is really lovely. The music is really lovely. It's very community based, and um, the production of it is basically they have these trees, and they have like fourteen chairs and two tables, and that's the whole set. And everybody plays multiple characters, and they move the chairs around. It's just very like 
movement wise, it's very inventive. It really transports you to this different time and place. And even though we're not changing locations with big sets and big costumes and things like that, it's very clear kind of where we are and where we're going. And it gives it a super kind of um, malleable, almost movie like feel because you're jump cutting and you're in and out of focus of things. And um, it just takes you on a really, really clear journey. Um, so I very much enjoyed that. Um, I like, of course, like I love Hamilton. Like it's basic, but I don't care. It's so good. <laughs> I, um, seen it. I don't think me and Dara have seen it yet. Have uh, you? Do uh, you have Disney Plus? You've got to watch it. It's ooh. on the internet now. I don't have Disney Plus. I actually, oh. I swear to God, I think we got rid of Disney Plus two weeks ago. Uh, the only reason I had Disney Plus was to watch all the Marvel shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they've all gotten pushed back like two years, so. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, Marvel movies are incredible. I'm a big fan yeah. of the series, so oh, uh, I'm I'm right there with you, but uh it's um have you guys heard of Hamilton? Do you yeah, know? Yeah, we've heard we've heard of Hamilton how big it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's a it's a big deal. Um it's just really well crafted. Um I'm always a fan of shows that all of the elements kind of work together um in a really positive way that like the set design and the costumes and the lighting and the choreography and the direction uh, are all really seamless. So you kind of don't really know where one stops and the other one starts. Um, I think that those are the most successful musicals. Um, and I think Hamilton does that in a really, really like revolutionary, for <laughs> no pun intended, but a very really <laughs> revolutionary way. Um, so I'm a fan of that one. And what was the last one? The one I've been in? Is that what was that it? Yeah. Um, I think the my favorite one I've ever been in is uh Chicago. Um oh, okay. I played Velma Kelly in a production of Chicago. Um and who's like one of the the main two leads and she's very sassy and she's uh a singer and a dancer and it's this like vaudevillian dark comedy um kind of show and I just had such a good time playing that role and the cast that I was with were incredible people um and yeah that was that was kind of a dream role for me that I played that and I was like okay um this is good this is fun uh, <laughs> so yeah and that has a great if you've ever, if you've never seen it, uh, the the movie version of it, it has like Catherine Zeta Jones and uh, uh, who else? Renee Zellweger and somebody else in it, um, and it's really good. It's really good. It's one of the better musical like uh, adaptation uh, uh, film adaptations of a musical I've seen. Um, Richard Gere, there it is. Mm. Um, John C. Riley. <laughs> yeah. Queen Latifah's in it, Tay Diggs. It's like, it's a good time. Um, so highly, highly recommend that one. So what would you say is your favorite uh, film adaptation of a, of a musical? Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, no. And here's why. Um, I think that uh, theater and film are such different mediums. Um, and while they did a good job, like kind of capturing the stage version of the show, I think that film can do so much more for uh, a story um, than theater can. Not in the sense that theater is less than, but theater is like an active audience participation moment. Whereas uh, film, like you are the only lens through which the audience can view the story. So you mm -hmm. have to be more specific about it um in a in a in a theater show right everybody sits in the audience and you can put a spotlight on somebody but you can't force them to not look stage right where it's dark and see like the table coming on or whatever um but uh you uh so i think that i mean i think chicago for me is is the one like is the one where i go like oh they nailed the they, they cut what they needed to cut and there aren't that many parts of the musical that I miss that aren't in the movie and they just did 
such a good job with uh, Chicago is a musical that's all about kind of the crossover of the world between the real world and the like performance world. So you take these very mundane specific moments and you turn them into big production numbers. Um, and so that's really that you can really do that on film because you can do jump cuts and you can do sets and costumes yeah. and like, you know, in a way that you really can't do it in uh, theater. But uh, yeah. I have to ask then for talking about film adaptations of uh, of uh, musicals. Yes. And it's in it's in the script for, for uh, we have a script of the what do you think of cats? Oh, oh god. Oh no. Um No, not those cats. Come on, internet. Some <laughs> funny looking ones. <laughs> yeah, I I am I am sad about it. It makes me sad. Cuz it's you that know? emotional. Is that emotional? Yeah, I'm that attached to it. Um, no, here's the thing, and this is gonna, I, I am a dancer, and so I should love the musical Cats because all it does is cast dancers. But even before the movie, as a child, yeah. I hated Cats. I thought it was so dumb. <laughs> I was like, this is two and a half hours of of people pretending to be cats. <laughs> and nothing really happens it just it's just there's this kind of cat and this kind of cat and and kind of the conclusion of the show is a cat is not a dog and it's like yeah i knew that i i knew that going into this <laughs> like, no i don't need that so you know i I'm always a fan of when a musical gets made into a movie because it employs dancers and employs musical theater people kind of all of the different ways on a larger and more uh, more well-paid scale than we usually go on. So I'm happy about that side of it. But it just, like, Cats did not need to be made into a movie. Like, in no, I don't know who greenlit this project, but I gotta have a conversation with them, cause it's really sad it is that you know there. Garfield, the live action looks more realistic than Cats. Garfield, Garfield's the shit. <laughs> love, love Garfield. <laughs> That's great, and you know what? The Cats movie, right? Like we don't gain anything about the story anything about the emotional attachment to things <laughs> by making them look like real cats, right? Like, we're, none of us are but. really operating under the assumption that real cats come out at night and have a jellico ball and do an absurdly difficult dance and <laughs> give someone back a life. Like, <laughs> But in Garfield, he goes through this emotional journey because yeah, he pushes away Garfield. the people that love him and then uh, when they're taken Garfield away from the him, of two kitties. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the first one. Shut up. <laughs> you know, he pushes away the person that loves him, Odie. And then when Odie is taken away, he realizes Odie. that he should have, you know, that he can't live without the things that he loves. And he goes on this big trip and gets him back. And oh, God, it's beautiful. And then yeah, they made the second in, one, which ruined it. Garfield, hey, no, shut up. <laughs> In Garfield, The Tale of Two Kitties, it's a kind of prince and a pauper situation. Because he gets flipped on his head. He goes to a rich family. The rich cat goes to the like the normal class family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I would Garfield rather watch musical. Garfield any day than the Cats movie. I promise. I mean, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? <laughs> Anyway, Thomas, what's your favorite musical? <laughs> My favorite musical. Thanks for asking, Dara. Um, favorite movie musical. I'm asking because you. I know you don't. You, I know for a fact you don't go see musicals. I don't. But I've seen a couple. You started, of them. No, I, I saw a couple of musicals. I've been to uh, Annie and uh, Jesus Annie, Christ Annie Superstar. Is, yeah. Mm. That's a good one. Um, I guess one I really liked was the Broadway one of Shrek. Mm. Just honest, I'm being honest. Like that, that is a really good one. The guy, uh, the dad of um, Hannah Baker from Thirteen Reasons Why, actually played Shrek on Broadway. Huh? Yeah. Trivia. Yeah, Trivia. I know. What was that? Nice. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, 
No, the Shrek musical. I thought it was really good, though. I used to have a DVD thing of it. I, I got a free with something. I can't remember it. <laughs> Would you count uh, Mike Myers' Cat in the Hat as a musical? I mean, they sing in it. No, it's and a they movie. Dance. No, it's a movie. They sing and dance. No, it's just terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Just because it scared you as a child doesn't make it terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me Could you it. imagine this massive cat? Can I also say that Mike Myers in that cat suit also looks more realistic than the cats in cats? Yes, he does. Actor. Oh my god! If they all, if they replaced every actor with Mike Myers in the Cat in the Hat cat suit, it would have been ten times better. I I agree with you guys. I <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> also, Cat in the Hat scarring film. Don't know how kids watched it. I don't know how I watched it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Don't you look at some of the kids, some of the things you were allowed to watch as a child, and you were like, why did yeah, anyone like, let why me watch this? Why the f*** did yeah. anyone let me watch this? It's terrible. <laughs> I remember I came, All right. I, came, I was one watching thing. TV one day, and my dad came in, and he, I had Reservoir Dogs on. And he was like, oh, good Jesus. movie. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. Wow. Nah, Great movie. Good choice. I, I always, At least you're not watching your fucking Shark Tale. Anyway, go on, Dara. The one I always hearken back to is, um, have you ever seen the live-action Pinocchio? Oh, live action Pinocchio. It's a live action Pinocchio. It's Geppetto, isn't it? Action. No, it's Pinocchio. But uh, there's a live action version, and uh, the scene where they turn into donkeys is horrifying. I feel like I wa- I watched this as a child at one yeah, point. Exactly. Thomas, yeah, exactly. Look, look up the just look up a picture of them turning into donkeys. <laughs> It's actually look there it is. There's the first. It's the first picture. That's ah. that is terrifying. So look at it. And like it's not just like one second they're kids, and one second they're donkeys. It's like they're transforming. You know, they get donkey ears and they're not, like their faces start to elongate. It's actually horrifying. I don't know who came up with it. I mean, Pinocchio in general is just like a terrifying story. Yeah. yeah. It's a puppet like, who came to life. You know who else came to life? Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Chucky, Pinocchio, what's the difference? Am I right? Too right, too right. One of them turns into a donkey. That's the difference. One that's one that's it. One into a donkey and one of them's a brutal serial killer. I think I'll take the serial killer, please. <laughs> At least he's smaller. At least he's smaller. That's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's go back to you. <laughs> let's talk about New York a little bit, because you're still in New York now, yes? I am, yeah. And have you lived there for all your life? I have. I, I've lived there for... Um, I've lived here since 2013. Um, so, I don't know how long that is at this point. 2020, what is that, seven years-ish? Yeah. Yeah, so I've been here for about seven years. I grew up, I was born in New York. I grew up in New Jersey, which is right out the state, right outside of New York. So it's been part of my, kind of part of my life forever. But I've been living here as a, as an independent individual for about seven years. What's what's life like as a New Yorker at the moment? Right now? Crazy. (laughs) Um, Just, I mean, I've, I've been going outside exclusively to, like, get groceries for the last, you know, four or five months at this point, which is kind of nuts. Um, We're just in a place where things are opening back up, but under very specific strictures of, like, only outside and, you know, don't try to fan six feet away from people and always wearing a mask. And um, so... It's a it's a totally different world. It's also, you know, I'm here because of the the art scene and that doesn't exist right now. Um like at all. Um the uh I this weekend I directed a uh, a film a short film shoot that was socially distanced oh which God. was yeah, it was so weird. It was so it was so odd, you know, everybody was in masks the whole time, the whole camera team, you know, I had to talk to my director of photography and be like, okay, well, what lenses do we need to rent if we want to get a close-up from six feet away from people? Um, 
you know, what equipment do we need to light people from this far away instead of, you know, usually you'd be able to get much closer and, and um, how do you, you know, how do we, we're, we filmed everybody outside, how do you not like, you know, die of heat stroke and, and how can we build in kind of like breaks and things for people, because, you know, carrying heavy equipment, lights and, and all sorts of stuff around the city, onto people's roofs, onto, you know, the streets and, and kind of not being able to be inside was a whole thing and it was also weird as a director because usually I'd you know walk up to an actor or walk up to a dancer and talk to them about what emotion they're doing in this moment in this scene and you know be very intimate with them and and touch them if they're you know open to that of like this is where I want you to go correction wise for dancing this is where I want this to move to and I just had to we just had to do all of it from six feet away from each other just like okay so now you're gonna feel like you're gonna look into the camera and you're gonna see you know this crazy thing happening and I'm just like screaming it across a park. <laughs> just love how you do. You're similar, you're screaming at them. <laughs> just, yeah. You have like a megaphone like, okay, <laughs> now you're gonna move two feet to the right. But not two feet, so it's four feet. You gotta be six feet so apart. Two, two feet, and then the other person, you also move two feet in the opposite direction. It was a, it was kind of a lot of that, um, <laughs> and making sure people felt comfortable of like, you know, everybody had the option to keep their mask on during shooting, which was weird. Of like, if you feel comfortable enough to take it off, that would be great because that would be a better shot. But if you don't feel comfortable, um, for some reason, <laughs> I don't. have to say their line. <laughs> yeah, right. it's uh, it was yeah, and miking people for in this situation, you know, like usually we'd go and we'd like mic them up and put their lavalier like the little mm. mic that gets onto your clothing on them in the correct position and instead we're six feet away like handing it off to them with a Lysol wipe to in- instructing them how to like run it up their shirt and where to put it and it's just like a whole <laughs> it was crazy um but it was it was yeah it was a it's a whole new kind of world um right now the only things that are in production are things that have the ability to either social distance or like quarantine the people that they're shooting with which is you know crazy crazy is what that is is. so it's madness right now um and most people are listening to the rules and then sometimes other people aren't and it makes me angry because i just want my city to open back up again and be safe um yeah no we get that we uh, it's... Yeah, like it, it, the whole thing. I remember, it, like, we're we're kind of at the end of quarantine right now. Yeah, um, how's it been for you guys? Um, they won't open up the pubs. Yeah, they won't open up the pubs, so it's pure shit. <laughs> I'll I'll send you a clip after this. It's a guy talking in our like, in our parliament, talking about it. he's like uh talking to the the ex uh a president or I guess kind of he's like the leader. He's now second in command because there's a new leader. Mm. And he was saying to him, like, what's the difference? Because he was a doctor as well. He goes, what's the difference between me having a pint in this hand and a cheese toasty in this hand? <laughs> and having a pint in this hand and no cheese toasty in this hand. Because they're allowing restaurants to open and serve drinks. Yeah, they're but allowed they won't open pubs. to have a restaurant, a restaurant license. Like, so pubs that serve food are allowed to open. I think it's Weird. over, what is it? I think nine. if the meal is over nine euro, yeah. Yeah. Mm. They, can, they can serve. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it, it's slowing down at the moment. Like you're obviously like there's some there has been some small spikes now in the last few days, but like nothing too major. Mm. And, uh, yeah, like I remember just in the middle of quarantine, like you'd see people like with their friends on their Snapchat story and you'd be like, get the fuck home and stay yeah. inside, please. And, you know, New York's done a, I mean, our state's done a a very good job. We were definitely the hub at the beginning, and we all kind of went like, great, we're going to stay inside for these months and blah, blah, blah. And then we look at the rest of our country, and it's just like... Yeah, there's there's some states now that are, well... What is it? Florida, Texas, and, like, California are the three worst places I've heard of. Yeah. I think Nevada I mean, shut down again, didn't it? All of, all of them have uh, over 10,000 cases in one day, I think, at some point. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure something that I, uh, something that I saw the other day was like, Florida is now like the world leader in COVID cases. The world, not even just our country. Stupid enough that we have a president that won't do anything about this. Now one state's the leader? It's crazy. I mean, yeah. it's terrifying. Um, it's <laughs> Mm. We yeah, we think, yesterday we got a green list, didn't we, Darren? Yeah, the, I was literally just about to mention the green list. Yesterday we got a green list of like where we're allowed to travel and where we're not allowed to travel. Obviously, mm. so the US and the UK are off limits. We can't go there. Mm. Mm. But wow. it, Dallas, it, like, which was the hub of the fucking virus for like two months straight, is mm. on the green list. You're allowed to go there. Crazy. But I do not know how that happened, but it did. <laughs> It's a, I mean, this shutdown's been crazy um, in general, but like, I don't know, for the arts, like I had, I personally had about like seven months of work lined up for, you know, shows and, and I was actually, uh, I work, I've worked for a theater in Denmark um, and I was supposed to go back there and work on a new musical for a couple months and I was directing a production of Cabaret and, you know, all these different things and then like, the shutdown happened and it's like no you're not gonna do any of that anymore which yeah. was fine for a moment and then it became like well when am i gonna be able to do some of this stuff again um but yeah anyway just you know uh i now i just want to like run away but they won't even let us do that so yeah <laughs> uh like i was i was absolutely heartbroken because i think just um, it must have been like the week of my 18th birthday we went into lockdown oh no uh, yeah I know so like the pubs closed no one could come over for a party or anything and I was just like oh and I couldn't get a, I was I was planning on get a tattoo uh, in like the weeks after my birthday mm. booked now though so that's good but uh, yeah even now like they have to deal with all the tattoos that were booked beforehand and uh, mm. so I have to wait two months oh wow yeah, it's it's pretty um pretty extreme, but yeah. Sure, look, if it happens, we'll be grand. <laughs> That'll be exciting. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> Thomas, you got anything more to say? Yeah, I got loads of questions. Jesus, we're only halfway into this, Dara. Halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff doesn't end until you're either passed out or dead. <laughs> Anyways, I am sweating right now. So Great. Looks like I could be dead in the next few minutes. Let's see. I have loads hey. of questions here. Like, um, I'm dead. I'm sorry. So, does does your job make you happy? Does my job make me happy? Yeah. Oh, what a nice question. Yes, very much so. Um, I love making dancing and directing people and helping shape a story um and rehearsing um it's my favorite thing to do um it's you know it's simultaneously like very creatively fulfilling and kind of like a form of therapy for everybody involved in it a lot of times when we when I uh create productions um we we try to like find some fulfillment and uh yeah I mean I love it. It's it's a beautiful thing making art. Um, I'm very lucky. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then uh, I have some. Uh, they're not stupid questions, but they're kind of just like you know, kind of kind of basic general. Um, do you have a bucket list? Oh, a bucket list. I think so. Can you um, name two, maybe three things on it. I. Hmm. I want to create a show that gets to tour the world. Um, I do a lot of, uh, I mean, I do obviously musicals we've talked a lot about, but I also, I have my own dance company and we create kind of these nonverbal um, dance story productions that are like often based on stories we already know like fairy tales or historic figures we have one on Helen of Troy and um all sorts of things um and I'm a big 
believer in the fact that movement is a universal language. So I, I have a bucket list thing to like make one of these shows that has no words in it and tour it throughout a bunch of different countries that speak a bunch of different languages and kind of see how that experiment goes and what people get out of it and kind of uh, continue with the thesis say, statement of like, you know, is movement a universal language? And, and, you know, do people get it even if we don't say anything? So that's just definitely a, a bucket. Just list. on that point of uh, touring, where would be your, your dream place to perform? Oh, Stay oh up. man. <laughs> um, hmm. Probably... To perform or to, to put a show in? I guess that's the... Well, the you know, you, kind of, you said you want to tour, all that <laughs> yes. kind of stuff. Where would be your, you know, prime kind of destination to go? <laughs> so, man, uh, just throwing <laughs> ideas out there, you know? I, I mean, I would love to come to Ireland. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> no, wait, that's, that's such a coincidence. Cause, I don't um, know where you're getting that idea from. We don't watch I, it here. I'm asking. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. No, I'm messing. Go on. Got the COVID. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd love to. I mean, kind of anywhere. I've I've gotten the opportunity to to tour to kind of a bunch of different places: Japan and and Sweden and Denmark and the UK. And I'd love to go back to those places. Obviously, um, I also like. I mean, if I could get a show in, like, the Crazy Horse or the Moulin Rouge in Paris, that'd be, like, super cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I would mostly just say somewhere that is beautiful and safe and green, which perhaps is... <laughs> that sounds I like Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll be, I'll be right there. See you guys in a few. Class. Great. <laughs> we'll be straight at the show. <laughs> Anyway, book a list. Number two. Oh. You've, got your, you've got your world tour. You've got your, you know, your fame, your life, your action. What's Ooh. next? Um, I would love, I mean, I would love to, like, this is so dumb, but I would love to buy a house. <laughs> That's not dumb at all. That is not dumb at all. Very cool. You know, I live, I live in New York, so I live in a, in a wonderful apartment. I'm very, I love my apartment. I love my building. Um, but like, you know, it'd be really nice to have a deck where I could sit and have coffee and make things. Um, so that'd be, that'd super be kind of a, a, a bucket list dream to have a house that has a dance studio in it. So I can, I can keep creating at home, um, you know, in case another COVID hits, I want to be prepared. <laughs> Of course. Um, your bunker we, of food ready, just yeah. and your antibacterial wipes. Yeah, I'll be like 40 years down the line. They'll be like, we don't need this anymore, Grandma. And I'll be like, when I was in my 20s, this happened. And I I'm not having it happen again. <laughs> exactly. You darn kids with your no COVID lives. <laughs> When I was young, we had to stay inside for six months. Listen, now, you son of Jim. We had to stay inside. <laughs> Don't go outside. You couldn't even smell the grass. <laughs> you smelled the grass and you were dead. Yeah, anyway. You smelled the grass, you had to have a mask on. Exactly. <laughs> oh, incredible. Um, where were we? Buying a house. <laughs> Buying a house. Yep, that's what I want. I want to buy a house somewhere. That's awesome. That's, oh, I think that's, that's awesome. a really good plan, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, World Tour and House. I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, something on, of my bucket list has recently uh, popped up and uh, could be fulfilled, but probably not. Mm. We don't really have Mustangs here in Ireland, and uh, I love them. I love, mm. the, I love the sound of them. I want one. And it just so happened that a Mustang turned up outside Thomas's house. At a car oh, it's, not, it's not mine, no. There's a garage next door to me. Don't. No, it's not no. Thomas's car. Not Thomas's car. I was like, that's a very nice present for your friend. Yeah, I was, just, <laughs> like, I was like, no, like, we're, he lives, like, right beside a car place. And uh, mm. 
Like we Thomas, what is what is that? That's not a Mustang. Oh damn, Derek! Look at these Mustangs, man. Look at that. That's, not a, that's like a Prius. What is no, that? No, man. Look, Mustang, right there. Look, see at the top in the search bar. Mustang. I mean, no, like we were passing it one day, and I just went, "Holy shit! Is that a Mustang?" <laughs> like I stayed at Thomas's last night, and I kept looking out the window, pretending it was mine, being like, "Look, see that over there? That's mine. It will be mine." <laughs> I don't know about this car, man. This looks pretty nice, though, I must say. Thomas, will you shut up? And man, if you Mustang. look at the search bar, it's literally a Mustang. Oh, oh my God, Thomas, I'll hurt you. Mustang. Look. I'll hurt you. Look, hurt these you. are not bad cars, man. You know, I'd be happy if you got what? one. Thomas, I've never even heard of this car. What is that? A Nissan Micra. Oh. <laughs> Bring up a Mustang. Bring I'll up a blue Mustang. Mustang. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, one of these. But this one, actually, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was literally that one. That that, that's one. like oh, sitting wow. outside my house. I, get, I have the honor of looking outside my house and seeing that every day. Lucky bastard. That's pretty. It's a pretty nice car. It's a pretty what? nice car. Except it's, uh, it's like a hundred grand. Mm. And, uh, one little tiny problem there, you know? Yeah. It's like you're so close, but so far. Like it's out in the street, but I need a hundred grand to get in it, you know? Mm. That's yeah. the problem. A hundred grand or a crowbar? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't, Dara, no. <laughs> okay, perfect. That's where we're going to end it. Thank you so much for getting on, Kristen. <laughs> My pleasure. It's been very good. Um, You've been such a cool and awesome guest to talk to. Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. Well, thanks for having me. If people want to find you uh, and, you know, look at your work, where, where, where can they get you? That's a great question. Um, they can follow me on Instagram at Kristen Brooks 19 um, is my Instagram. Um, or they can follow my dance company, uh, which is uh, Thistle uh, Dance Inc. Um, we on Thistle's mailing li- uh, website, we also have like a mailing list and things like that. Or they can just follow me, send me a message and say hi. Um, I'm always uh, happy to talk art and uh, make new friends. So that ha- this has been uh, absolutely wonderful. It has been wonderful. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Sandler. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. You too. Happy. And good Bye. luck. <laughs>